Good morning, everyone. Our opening song is out of the Glory and Praise, which is the larger book, number 478. 478, Precious Lord. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, help me stand. I am tired, I am weak, I am worn. Through the storm, through the night, lead me on to the light. Take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home when my way grows drear precious lord linger near when my life is almost gone hear my cry hear my call hold my hand lest i fall Take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, my brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. As we gather at this Mass, we pray in a special way for the repose of the souls of Ron Ryan and Father Emmett Lacey. For the times we fail to love God as we should, we bow our heads and ask for His mercy. For he is full of gentleness and compassion. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at God's right hand. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant that your faithful, O Lord, we pray, may be so comforted to the paschal observances that the bodily discipline, now solemnly begun, may bear fruit in the souls of all. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me. If the wicked turn away from all their sins that they have committed and keep all my statutes and do what is lawful and right, they shall surely live. They shall not die. None of the transgressions that have have committed shall be remembered against them, for the righteousness that they have done shall not live. Have I any pleasure in the death of the wicked, says the Lord God, and not rather that they should turn from their ways and live? But when the righteous turn away from their righteousness and commit uh, iniquity and do the same abominable things that the wicked do, shall they live? None of the righteous deeds that they have done shall be remembered, for the treachery of which they are guilty and the sin they have committed, they shall die. Yet you say, the way of the Lord is unfair. Hear now, O house of Israel, is my way unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? When the righteous turn away from their righteousness and commit iniquity, they shall die for it. For the iniquity that they have committed, they shall die. Again, when the wicked turn away from the wickedness they have committed and do what is lawful and right, they shall save their life. Because they are considered and turned away from all transgressions that they have committed, they shall surely live. They shall not die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response is, happy are are those who fall... Excuse me. Our response is, if you, O Lord, lay bare our guilt... Who would endure it? 
If you, O oh Lord, laid bare our guilt, who would endure it? Out of the depths I cry to you, O oh Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, O oh Lord, laid bare our guilt, who would endure it? If you, O oh Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who would stand? But there is forgiveness with you, so that you may be revered. If you, O oh Lord, laid bare our guilt, who would endure it? I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning. If you, O oh Lord, wait for our guilt, who would endure it? Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Rid yourselves of all your sins and make a new heart and a new spirit. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him, and he taught them, I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to those of ancient times, You shall not murder, and whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you that if you are angry with a brother or sister, you will be liable to judgment. And if you insult a brother or sister, you will be liable to the council. And if you say, you fool, you will be liable to the hell of fire. So when you are offering your gift at the altar, if you remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First, be reconciled to your brother or sister, and then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while the two of you are on the way to court, or your accuser may hand you over to the judge, and the judge to the guard, and you will be thrown into prison. Truly I tell you, you will never get out until you have paid the last penny. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of the gospel wipe away our sin. Amen. The scriptures today are all about justice and the mercy that comes from God, the difference between being righteous and being unrighteous. Throughout the scriptures, the people in the scriptures that are holy are not called good. They're called righteous. St. Joseph was known as being righteous. Our Blessed Mother is known as righteous. Moses was known as righteous. That's a word when you study the scriptures that should be part of our vocabulary as we study the scriptures. My goal is to be considered righteous in the eyes of God. A little more Christian word, which is just shorter, is holy. It's not about being good. And it's important that we understand that God is saying that what you de determine to be fair is not what I determine to be fair. Because for many of us, would we think that it is fair that Hitler could be in heaven? Or perhaps some person who committed heinous crimes? Could we see Judas in heaven? Well, according to the mercy of God, if they are sorrowful for what they've done, they can be. It's not up to us, is it? And so it is important that we understand, friends, our place. We are not the judge of the world. Jesus is the judge of the world. Our job is to focus on how am I living holiness? How am I living a righteous life? Am I living holiness and a righteous life? And the importance of turning from our sin is what moves the heart of God. We hear this over and over and over again. Whether we think it's fair or not, 
Jesus, many times in the scriptures, talks about the fact that he wants everyone in heaven. This is something that is not reserved for the VIPs of the world, but rather he wants every soul there. That should be our desire too. But we need to judge less, we need to pray more. So may we continue to focus on what he says in the gospel about reconciling with one another. As I've mentioned very often, eat as much chocolate as you want, but when you have beef with people, settle that beef. When there's dysfunction in your family, that's what moves the heart of God. Eat the chocolate, right? It's important that we go deep in our spiritual lives. And Jesus is very clear. You have an issue, leave your issue at the altar, your gift, and settle the issue. Come back, pick up your gift, and then proceed to worship the Father. It's so important that we think more like God and less like humans. No, but I want to be right. I want to have the last word. I don't want him or her to win. Jesus is saying it doesn't matter. Leave it alone. Let's let that baggage go. Let us worship God with a pure heart. Let us focus on righteousness. Let us focus on mercy. And let us focus on compassion. Together with one voice, we raise our prayers to the Lord, trusting in God's goodness and love for us. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the needs of the church, that God may provide faithful shepherds to guard their flocks on the way of life, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for each of us, especially those of us who struggle with forgiveness and mercy toward one another, that just as God is merciful to us, so we are called to be merciful we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all who govern. May the example of Jesus inspire them in pursuing true justice and peace, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our brothers and sisters in Ukraine, that peace may reign and that God may bring an end to this unnecessary violence, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all who are burdened by loneliness. May the Holy Spirit provide consolation and companionship for them, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all of us gathered here at St. Joseph. May the love of God be the source of our daily joy as we strive for holiness and righteousness, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for <clears throat> um, Ron and Father Emmett and all the faithful departed. May God's mercy bring them to eternal life in heaven, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the intentions we verbalize to God from the silence of our hearts. Loving Father, we ask that you look favorably upon these prayers we offer to you. We ask these in all things through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread which we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mingling of this water and wine, we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine which we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, of my iniquity. Cleanse me of my many sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. Accept the sacrificial offerings, O Lord, by which in your power and kindness you willed us to be reconciled to yourself and our salvation to be restored through Christ our Lord. 
My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. My Lord and my God. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. My Jesus, mercy. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we now celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Gerard, our Bishop, and all the clergy and religious. Remember your servants, Father Emmett and Ron, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who were united with your Son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her husband, with your blessed apostles, with St. Catherine of Alexandria, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. My brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Turn and offer one another a sign of the Lord's peace.
Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us your peace. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and work of the Holy Spirit, through your death, gave life to the world, free us by this, your most holy body and blood, from all our sins and from all that is evil. Keep us faithful to your commandments, and never let us be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. May the blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. For those receiving Jesus in a spiritual communion, I invite you to pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. May the holy refreshment of your sacrament restore us anew, O Lord, and cleansing us of old ways, take us up into the mystery of salvation through Christ our Lord. Let us turn to our Blessed Mother as we pray. We fly to thy protection, O Holy Mother of God. Despise not our petitions and our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin, amen. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in the day of battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl through the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Good Saint Joseph, ever watchful guardian of the Holy Family, protect the chosen people of Jesus Christ. Keep us free from the blight of error and corruption, and be our ally in the conflict with the powers of darkness. As of old, you rescued the child Jesus from the plots of Herod. So now defend the universal church from all harm. Keep us one and all under your continual protection, so that by your help and example, we may lead a holy life, die a happy death, and come to possess eternal life in heaven. Amen. My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Mass has ended. Our Lenten journey continues. Let us go forth in the peace and love of Jesus Christ. When the darkness appears and the night draws near and the day is past and gone, at the river I stand, guide my feet, hold my hand, take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home. God bless you. Have a good day.